Hello, hello everyone. Oz Konar here with Business Lending Blueprint. I am excited to be meeting all of you today. I uh, sent two last minute emails. I um, decided to do a live last week and um, this week I said, oh yeah, why don't I just uh, notify everyone last minute and, and we can have a conversation with those who can join about an opportunity that you might not really uh, know or you might be following us for a while and you want to understand the business model better because Let's be honest. I mean, it's the Thanksgiving week and we're approaching the new year. And um, I know that the only way to add more income to your current income is if you acquire newer skills. Right. But before we get started, let's do an audio and uh, video check. If you can use the chat and give me a yes, if you can hear me, OK, and if you can see me fine. So I don't uh, I don't I don't want to just talk to myself. Let me just check the. Uh, chat here real quick to see if I'm receiving your uh, responses. So give me a yes, please. So I know that I can continue and we're going to be taking a lot of questions throughout this. This is not going to be a monologue. It's not going to be just me talking. Steve says yes. Dang says yes. Dane, uh, Tedious, uh, Antoine, Mind, Donald can see and hear you. Mark. Hey, what's up, everyone? All right, we got a bunch of people. So I want to know where everyone is from. So again, again, this uh, so this can be interactive. I want to answer the questions that you have. Um, we get literally no exaggeration, hundreds of emails every single day about uh, lending, alternative lending, becoming a business loan bro broker, becoming an investor. So I took a summary of the most frequently asked questions and I'm going to be covering them. But more importantly, I want to get to know who's on the call today. So if you can let me know where you are from, what state you're from, that would be awesome. Mark is from Orlando. Dane, what's up, Dane? Denver and Long Beach, Houston. Is that Pharaoh? Um, Judah, LA, Antoine, uh, Chicago, Erica, um, Michigan area, Deng, Miguel, Oklahoma. Awesome. No one from New York, New Jersey? I am in New Jersey, by the way. Our um, first office was in New York City in Midtown. And I know there's a huge network of loan brokers in New York City. Uh, Sacramento, Tennessee. Irvine, Texas. Awesome. Okay. So uh, again, I narrowed down our approach and what I can cover into five questions. So the first one is, what is a business loan broker, right? So um, many people are confused about the type of business loan broker uh, opportunity that we're talking about versus what is already out there. The second question is, how do business loan brokers make money, right? Because if you're starting a new business or if you're adding lending to your existing business, well, the currency for success in business is the ability to make more money. So how, how do these business loan brokers make money? That's the second question that I'm going to cover today. Third one is how do you become one how do you become a business loan broker because alternative lending industry is not regulated so there's no association that you can apply there's no college that you can go to get a certificate or a degree or a diploma to become a business loan broker so i'm going to show you ways how you can become one and the fourth one is some secrets that no one seems to be talking about to um become a business loan broker, successful business loan broker. You can start any business, but again, um, the currency of success is your ability to make more money, learn a new skill set with it, and lead your life to a better future, right? Financially uh, speaking, because, um, you know, what I always talk about is there are three types of uh, freedom, the financial freedom, time freedom, the location freedom. Financial freedom is your ability to uh, make money pretty much on demand or better your financial uh, future, finding a better vehicle that's going to get you to that point of making a lot more money than your current vehicle. Your current vehicle could be a job or it could be a, another business or it could be an entrepreneurial endeavor that you're kind of looking into. Um, but is that really the best vehicle for you? And are you aware of other options out there? And the last one is we're going to talk about business lending blueprint because many of you are probably joining because you are on our email list and you're looking into this. Um, so for that reason, I want to answer questions about our program. But this live is not just about what we do and offer. I want to provide and give back a lot of uh, value to you guys on uh, on understanding pretty much how this business works. That's going to be my uh, priority. So there's going to be the five things that we talk about. And uh, let me just silence 
my phone. I was expecting an important phone call, but now we are live. So we'll just kill that. Um, so let me see. Frank says, expecting much info, listening to every word said. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mine, DJ from Indiana, Lake Tahoe. Oh, Lake Tahoe is beautiful. Uh, Jotam from Uganda, Chicago, Bogota. That's awesome. We have people from pretty much all over the place. That is great. And how many of you currently know about business lending blueprint? So I know who's watching us right now. So I can, um, because if you have no idea what it is, then I'm going to take a different approach versus if you know uh, what it is that we do here. Silville, hey, hey, you're here. That's awesome. What's up, Alvin? Oh, we finally have someone from New Jersey. North Houston. Okay, awesome. Michigan, great. So let's get started. I'm going to first define what a business loan broker is. And um, let me know if that makes sense. So being a broker was something goes back like 200 years or so, right? So being a broker is the person in between a buyer and a seller. Um, so you see, and you probably have experienced uh, this when you're buying a home. So there's a buyer, there's a seller, there's a broker, there's an agent in between. Um, that's called real estate agent or real estate broker. There's a mortgage broker, there's an insurance broker, there's an insurance company, and there's the consumer or the business owner who needs insurance, car insurance, life insurance, and that person becomes the broker. And that person makes money when the exchange takes place, meaning that a property, insurance, product, or services change hands from this company either as a service or as an asset to the other company, other person, other party, and the broker makes money that way. How this is different in alternative lending industry is that you're becoming the middleman uh, for exchange of money, right? So there are businesses, either startup businesses or existing small businesses who need capital, funding, credit card, credit cards, or real estate, and they cannot get it through traditional means meaning going to walk into a bank and asking for a loan. And um, statistically, we know that it's more than likely that you're going to be declined as a business uh, business owner, right? So there's a um, you know decline rate of about 85% or more. You can apply for credit cards on your own, but it is far better if you know what credit cards to apply so you increase your likelihood of getting approved. So these are the things that are in demand, credit cards, money, capital, loans, um, you know, lines of credit or the real estate property they want to buy. And the money needs to come from a place. So broker in the alternative lending industry um, is someone who can orchestrate that transaction, bring the lender uh, with the buyer, pretty much the receiver and become the middle person. Why? As lenders in alternative lending industry, for the most part, they don't really have their own sales team other than maybe telemarketers and cold callers. They need business loan brokers to find them opportunities and bring it to them because these lenders make money only when the deal is funded, right? And they're primarily wanting to work with small businesses. Why? Because it's a very advantageous period um, to work with small businesses. The small business uh, numbers, the rate of new businesses being added to the economy is, has been skyrocketing ever since the pandemic. Um, you know, that was many people who thought they were safe, but their jobs lost their jobs and all the ideas they had in the prior years about starting a business while well, they wanted to make it a reality. And there was an explosion of startup businesses. But U.S., I mean, there's S&P 500, right? So U.S. economy is mostly dependent on the performance of small businesses. Well, the number one problem that they have uh, is to survive and grow because there's a high failure rate of small businesses in U.S. economy. You probably read the reports that 85% of the small businesses don't make it through the first year. But what people do not really talk about is why that is the case. A lot of them need cash infusion, meaning that they need a little bit of support, a little push in the butt to get more customers, buy more inventory, um, open their uh, business at a better location, hire the right people to grow the business. OK, so they are lacking the resources. And as business loan brokers, you can provide those resources to them that the banks will not and cannot provide. So why are we not in competition with banks? That's a valid question, right? So do you wanna be competing against 
Bank of America's, Wells Fargo's, and Chase Bank's? No, you do not because they have access to corporate money. They have access to stock market money, and they're very picky who they fund. And they usually uh, favor larger businesses, mid-sized to um, you know, uh, higher tier businesses, large businesses. But the backbone of the U.S. economy is on small businesses, right? So we're talking about 70% of the entire economy. We're talking about more than 35 million small businesses. That's massive. Some countries do not even have a population of 35 million people. U.S. has that many businesses and about 10 to 15,000 of them are being added every single day. So by you placing yourself in the middle of this transaction between a small business who are in need of capital and funding and credit cards and the lenders who are in need of businesses who need that capital, you position yourself to make a lot of money because you're solving a huge problem. Now, uh, we're almost a month away from a new year and many people will have their new year's resolutions of uh, um, you know looking fitter pretty much and maybe losing weight and uh, eating healthier food but most importantly bettering their financial future but i'll tell you one thing not to be on anybody's face but unless you add more skill sets new skill sets that are valued by the, by the marketplace you will not increase your worth financial worth in 2024 how many people agree with me there? Give me a yes. Unless you increase the skill set, unless you become more beneficial to the marketplace, market is not going to pay you more. So whatever you have been doing up to this point, if you do not think you're happy with the outcome, unless you make a change, just changing the year by one number will not change your income. I guarantee you that. So that's why you're here. So I do appreciate it because you're investing in yourself. We're trying to learn this. So um, I'm seeing a lot of agreed. Yes, yes, yes. If you can do one thing, if you can improve yourself just 1%. I know people talk about making quantum jumps. You're going to start something and make $10 million. I'm telling you, it's not realistic, right? What the best investment you can make is not the stock market, is not the crypto market, is not the life insurance, is not buying books and reading books. These are all great things, but the best invest investment you can make is in yourself and it has to be very intentional because we know that as human beings our memory is kind of limited we can't be learning 20 30 different things you have to pick one thing one advice if you don't mind me giving it to you that i'll give you for the next year is that learn how money works okay so you're living in the United States, the most capitalistic country in the world. Whether you like it or not, that's a different different uh, situation. But you know that if you do not make more money, your life will be incrementally more and more difficult. Can you give me a yes if you agree with that? Can we all agree on this one? I'm not talking about just business loan brokerage or anything else. I'm not just talking about credit or lending. You need to know how money moves. You need to learn how money works. You need to know why you don't want to be on the, on the receiving end of the money from the lenders, from the loans and banks. That's usually how people operate in their thinking. They want to start a new business. They're looking for ways to get money. How about you make money every time someone else needs money? How about you choose to belong to the top 1% of the people who understand how money flows? How do you think these lenders, the private lenders, had access to all that money? You might just come up with a conspiracy theory and believe that they're all evil. They're trying to control the world and all that stuff. But does it really change your situation? Is it better to learn the rules of money, the lending and credit, not only to apply to yourself, but save others, save the ones that you love, your loved ones, people that you know who start businesses, who want to start a business? What is number one reason? Give me, give me an answer in the chat. Many people, more than 75% of the adult population in the United States, at one point in their lifetime, thought about starting a business. Most of them did not. What do you think is the number one reason that stops people from even considering to start a business? Number one reason. Michael says independent. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Fear. Erica says money. Faroa says lack of capital, cash, money. Yeah, 
You guys nailed it. That's the number one problem, right? It stops people on their tracks and it kills their motivation, drive, the desire for change because they don't think there is a way to, you know, get access to capital. Is that really true, though? It's not. There are so many ways that these businesses can get access to capital, but they need informed financial experts, someone like you who can learn how to become a business loan broker and inform them of their options. And by doing so, since you're providing an amazing service, you make money. That's what a business loan broker does. Business loan broker finds solutions to the number one problem that people have in the United States. How many people would actually start their dream business if they knew that there was a way to get access to capital? I guarantee you millions of people because they have a lot to contribute to the economy. Some will be successful, some will not be successful. You cannot control that, but what you can't control, what you can control on your end is to give them options. People need options. They don't know, right? They don't know what their options are. Many people, I used to work with a lot of banks back in the day. I would literally watch people walking into a branch with high hopes, with even their business plan in their hands, talk to the small business banker, apply for a loan, and being told that, hey, you know, we process, we'll we process your application and let you know. They would walk out. And I knew that since I was working with the banks that they would not hear from these major banks for weeks at a time. And even the small business bankers and the regional managers and the branch managers knew that the answer would be a no. Banks have been crushing the dreams of American businesses for centuries, right? But there is now alternative lending that has been growing in triple digit digits. That means 100% or more every single year. Why is that? Is it because growing because of us, the lenders, the brokers? No, because of demand. See, in marketing, there's a fact. You cannot create demand for a product, but you can channel it. So there's like an avalanche of demand from people uh, who actually dislike um, their bank. So how many of you would you agree that more and more people are having a sour relationship with their banks? I mean, a lot has been going on recently, right? You guys follow the news. All the banks are going under, but the CEOs are leaving uh, their position while they failed the entire business, but they still managed to get paid 20, 30, 40 million dollars as if nothing happened. And all the depositors, they might lose their money unless it is insured and it's only insured up to a certain amount. So this is happening. And the, the part that always pissed me off that when you open a bank account, they, they, they do anything it takes for you to deposit your hard earned income into that bank. You might be depositing your income, your paycheck, your, you know, um, check out cash at the end of the day from your small business into it. But when it is time for you to get 10, 15, 20,000 from them, they give you all kinds of excuses. Is, is, is that a transparent relationship? Is, is that cool? You, you, you wouldn't keep a friend like that, right? I've been feeding you all these years. And when I need you, you tell me that I'm high risk. Well, how about you? Banks have really high failure rate too, unless they're bailed out by the US government. Let's talk about the truth here, right? So if that's the case, that's what a business loan broker does. You got to take your side. You have to decide that you're going to stay at your current job and whatever it is that you're doing. Maybe you have a job, you're a business, or you'll choose um, to add a new skill set to understand how this game is played and take a side, take the right side to help businesses get access to capital. Does this make sense so far? I know I've been going on for a while. I just want to make sure and check with you guys that this is you guys are clear on what a business loan broker does. Kevin says, yes, I, I read the news on Wall Street Journal, Kevin. Just today, Citibank laid off thousands of workers. Yes. Jerry says, I do credit unions because banks don't know your name, 100%. More fees, less service. Yes. Over the years, the fees bank charge, charges for the service they provide, which is not a lot, has been going up, right? So uh, 10 years ago, they would charge it $4.99. Now, for example, Chase Bank is charging $19 and up, especially if you're a business that is a lot more than that. Erica says, yes, I'm following you. Perfect. All clear. All right. Since we covered the first part of the most frequently asked questions that we get, what exactly does a business loan broker do? Now, let's talk about how do business loan brokers make money? There are different ways that loan brokers make money, and the way they make money 
has been changing over the years. So when I started, when I got into, I found out about alternative lending in the street by accident, right? I was um, doing door-to-door -door sales in New York City, selling credit card processing services and a bunch of other services. I was trying to figure out what I needed to do to make more money pretty much. And I built a portfolio of restaurants that I provided uh, credit card services and like those POS touchscreen services, right? And then I got approached by a uh, business loan broker who was offering funding to his customers. And he noticed that I'm specializing in the restaurant industry. And he asked me if I want to help them get access to capital. And I didn't know anything about money or capital or lending or alternative lending. I said, sure, as long as it helps my customers. He's like, well, no, not only it will help your customers, it will be very lucrative for you. And he gave me a five minute talk about how it works. I'll tell you right now, 95% of it went over my head. I had no idea what it was talking about. I just heard the money part and I heard that, okay, it could help businesses get access to capital. And I said, okay, so what do you, what I need to do? He's like, well, pick, you know, a few of the businesses that you know you're close with, call them and ask them if they're looking for additional capital. And I just did. I called like four or five people and talked to these restaurant owners that I've known by first name and I had their cell phone number. And uh, a few of them said, sure, send them over. And I told the guy, hey, these guys are interested. Why don't you give my name, take my card. They know who I am. Go talk to them and do what you need to do and help them out. So uh, a, a week to 10 days passed by and I got a call from this guy and he told me that he has my check because he funded one of the restaurants. I was like, wow, okay, that's awesome. I, you know, good job, buddy. Nice follow up. And he asked me to follow, you know, have a meeting at one of the restaurants or it was a cafe, I believe. Uh, so we sat down. He's like, thank you so much for business. Here's your check. When I picked it up, the amount on the check was $4,000. I just couldn't believe my eyes because, you know, uh, at that at that point, my annual income was about fifty, sixty thousand dollars, and I was working my butt off, like pulling on doors and talking to people and calling two, three hundred people on certain days of the week. And this guy just handed me a four thousand dollar check by funding one business to help a business get access to forty thousand dollars. As you can imagine, I, I was all ears from that point on, and that was the beginning of my journey in alternative lending industry. The reason I'm telling you that story is that's one way of making money and that there was only one product back then. There are right now more than two dozen different lending options where you as the broker can make money. So I'm going to walk you through some of them. The one that worked for me, which was a merchant cash advance. Merchant cash advance is an advance uh, on, um, on somebody's revenue. So if a restaurant is making $100,000 a month in New York City, they can... Um, request funding for up to hundred thousand dollars that's very lucrative it is expensive there's a high interest rate but for businesses who need that capital immediately and especially those businesses who cannot get it from any other source it's an amazing resource right so you get the money in two to three days it's a rapid funding option so as a business loan broker from the moment that you introduce this business to your lending partner to the point that you make money it can be three to five days i highly suggest that you compare that to any other business model such as real estate right real estate is in trouble right now right so the there are not there are not many homes in the marketplace and interest rates are super high. And even if when things were subtle and great uh, and it was it was moving in the right direction, the, the amount of time it takes for you to get payment, it could be 35 to 45 to 60 days. Same thing with the insurance. There is a massive clawback. You sell the insurance policy and you might not you might not get your money back. So this is one of the products like an emergency uh, fund that allows you very large lucrative money up front and helps the business save the day either you know something broke they replace it either they need to buy some kind of equipment or they need to make the payroll so that they don't leave uh, they don't lose key employees or they need to buy a competitor or like this time of the year the holiday season they need to stock up on inventory so they need those th th that money and they don't really have any other source to get it from because the banks would take forever and they would ask for the collateral their home their car and their bank statements uh, i'm sorry their the tax returns uh, and, and and merchant cash advance you don't need any one of that so that's one of the options that you can get funding for your business, for your customers today. And uh, on average, you're making two to $5,000, depending on the size of the deal. So 
I'm just gonna check out the chat every once in a while so I can catch the questions in relation to the lending options that I'm talking about. Uh, Sairam, uh, hello Oz, are you taking questions please? Yes, I am. You can just post it here. I have my own agenda. I'm answering the most common questions that I get, but at the same time, um, you know, when, if you guys ask questions, I'll try to get to all of them. Okay. Antoin, um, question asks, how do chargebacks work in this industry? Do they happen often? They ha they do not happen as often, depending on the lending options. So we just talked about one of them. So I'm going to talk about that one. Usually chargebacks happen within the first 30 days. So the, if there is any clawback, some, some lenders do not even have it. It's usually if it happens within the 30 days. So statistically speaking, chargebacks are every two out of 100 deals or something like that why because the lenders are doing their due diligence too before they fund the money so it's not your money you're using other people's money to become a business loan broker right you're not investing your own money into it you're becoming the, the broker i will also talk about how to invest into these deals that's a lot of what i do right um but yeah so that's like very uh, nothing like the insurance industry we have a ton of people who come to our network uh from the insurance industry and some of the chargeback the clawback terms go up to like 10 11 months that's insane right they and how do we know our products and services are reputable how do we know our products and services yeah that's why i want to talk about a couple of them dane uh because alternative lending industry technically has hundreds of products but most of them are not a good fit for someone just starting out and most of them some of them are not even fair to the business owner so i'm going to talk about the most lucrative, lucrative one and the ones that are in most demand so one is merchant cash advance that's one way to make money the second option is you can help someone buy any kind of equipment or software what is like the number one expense when a business is growing? They need to buy more stuff. If you're a restaurant, you're going to buy more tables and chair. If you're in the trucking industry, you're going to buy more trucks. If you're in the construction industry, your equipment will break all the time. Or if you're expanding um, your business, you need more equipment to buy. So when you're walking into a bank with a request to buy an equipment, guess what? They don't really have a product for that, right? Unless you want to give everything to the bank, your collateral, the cars, the tax statements, and all of that, and they might be okay with it. But we have... And the alternative lending industry, a large uh, lending network of uh, uh, lenders who uh, who fund equipment. It's called equipment leasing, right? So you pretty much as the business owner needs to know what equipment they're going to be buying, get the invoice from it and get the funding for it uh, from alternative lending uh, business loan brokers. That's another way to make solid income. In our community, we have a lot of people who start out as a generalist, meaning that they they learn. We teach them how to become a business loan broker and learn different funding options. Over time, they channel themselves into a specific funding avenue so that they can become the expert. Because don't forget, you can learn information, but mastery takes time, right? Mastery takes doing the craft that you're working on. So that's a very lucrative area uh, in our network, network. We have people who started out as generalists and now they are major equipment um, lending brokers. So anyone who's buying, for example, a yellow iron, trucks, a, you know, a construction equipment, like I mentioned, is a good candidate for that one. Third one is for a little bit of larger businesses and manufacturing facilities. Anyone who does work provides some kind of service and they receive a check in the form of an invoice. Let's say you uh, paint a Walmart store. Your customers are, uh, they, they run a painting company and they land this large uh, pro uh, project and they're going to be painting entire Walmart. Well, as you can imagine, the check they're going to receive for that project could be 100,000, 200,000. I have no idea. I'm not a painter. So it's going to be a pretty darn large check. What Walmart will not do, they're not going to ACH the money into your client's account or they're not going to give you a check that you can run to the bank and deposit. They're going to give you a check with terms, which means that it can be net 30, net 60, net 90, net 120. Basically, it means that I'm, I'm paying you right now, but you're not allowed to cash this before 90 days. Well, that's a problem for a small business who's, who does painting jobs, right? Because you had a crew of 30 people painting this place. You got to pay them. Uh, you have the money, but it is in the form of a check and you cannot cash it. Well, we have a solution for that. It's called invoice factoring. So if you have an invoice factoring lender, 
you can become the broker that connects that lender to your customer. Yeah, the lender takes that check that's net 90 from your customer, pays your customer the total amount. They take the little fees out of it. So instead of the customer waiting 90 days and potentially lose the company and lose the employees, um, so they can cash the check pretty much. And as a broker for finding a solution, you make your money that way. Now let's talk about real estate, right? So real estate um, is in bunkers right now. There's a lot going on with the real estate. But one thing is there's so many investors who are still buying fix and flip deals, ground up construction, multifamily deals, buy and hold investors. How many people are familiar with real estate here? Give me a yes if you understand real estate a little bit. So there's so many investors. So market is super slow for those who are first time home buyers, maybe for those who are second time home buyers, but investors, they're looking for more deals. Guess what? If you're a fixed and flipper, um, the bank is going to provide the funding for your first two, three deals. But if you're moving a little too fast, you want to buy another property, you're going to pause, uh, you're going to cause a, uh, to be a high risk for the bank. And they're not going to want to provide you uh, money immediately because they have their risk assessment and you might be too risky for that assessment. So at that point, we have uh, an alternative lending industry, so many alternative lenders when it comes to real estate. Uh, they fund real estate projects in like, again, um, ground up commercial projects, like commercial buildings, two to four uh, family homes, uh, cannabis businesses, uh, real estate. So anything that is not primary residence, uh, we can help people in alternative lending and issue where banks will not help. That's a, that's a huge, huge plus. The other thing is business credit. Many people start a business not knowing that actually you can build uh, credit for your business as if that your business as a person. Many people make the mistake of guaranteeing, signing contracts with a personal guarantee for funding uh, while they don't they're not aware of that there is something called business credit and they don't build that and if you build your business credit the options for you to get funding the credit the credit cards funding options open up tremendously and in our network we train people on that too and as a business loan broker you should be knowledgeable on how that works not only you can help yourself so that the everyday decisions that you have about buying stuff should not be on your social security number and with personal guarantee you know how to work around that um and you can also help others do that another option i know i'm going fast but i just want to give you the diversity of the, all the things that you can do it's not just it's not like an amazon business that you're kind of stuck to one platform you have to put stuff and find products on amazon alternative lending another you know uh, meaning for it is creative finance right so small deals and large deals can happen like you can fund provide somebody up to five thousand dollars in funding or all the way up to 30 million dollars in funding all of these are possible so collection of these different lending options and the commission generated uh, from that is one way to make money but that's an active way of making money. That's earn income. You put into work to make money, which is awesome, which is better than any other vehicle. But are we all, are we just about making money by putting in the time? What about like time freedom? How do you gain time freedom without having to work for it all the time? Is there a business vehicle that allows you to at some point decide that, you know what, I'm in this funding business, I built it up to 30, 40, 50K, wh wh whatever your desired income is, but I wanna get to a point that I want my money to work for me. Well, guess what? That's called partial syndication. As you become a more experienced business loan broker and you're helping your customers, you're brokering these deals, you're helping your customers get access to capital, you get to a point of having access capital. You're making good money. What if you can partner with the lenders and fund some of the, the, these deals yourself? What happens if you do that? while well, you're making a lot more money on the portion of the deal that you're funding. You're becoming a partial lender. In lending terminology, we call it partial syndication. You are submitting deals to lenders. And if the lender says, well, I, I will approve this deal and you'll make $3,000 out of a deal, but you want to make $5,000 out of that deal and you learn how to, you, you understand the structure of deals, you can fund up to 25, 30% of the funded amount. Let's say 
this lender is going to be providing fifty thousand uh, dollars to this merchant you can fund 12.5 twelve thousand five hundred dollars of that out of your own pocket but on on that amount you're making sometimes more than double so you're putting in the same effort you just potentially double triple your income on the same deals so what is happening while well, your money is making more money? Obviously, that's only for savvy, savvier business loan brokers who have the experience, which we teach how to do that. That's the second form of half passive income generation in the alternative lending industry. Well, how do you get to a point of not working and having your money do all the work? Is that really possible in this industry? It's called passive income, right? A lot of people talk about passive income, but you find out that it's almost never passive uh, because you have to do a lot of work. But in this industry, you can actually do that. It's called full syndication. You can partner with lenders and become their uh, financing partners. Obviously, this requires you to already have money and you syndicate all of these deals, even if you're not funding them yourself. Personally, I started from the bottom up. But as a company, we do a lot of that, right? So we keep reinvesting our earnings back into the industry. We have a lot of skin in the game. We're working with lenders to reinvest our earnings back into the small businesses of the United States because we believe in uh, the small, as Warren Buffett says, if you trust the small business of the United States, you're not going to go wrong, right? Um, that's what we're doing. We're investing back into our community. That's almost, there's nothing is 100% passive, but it, probably takes a, a you know two three hours a month of management uh, looking at the deals pretty much that's a hundred percent passive income so when you're starting a business when you're adding a new skill set you want to add something that has the longevity to give you your retirement either officially or unofficially or passive income this is the beauty of this industry yes when you're starting out you can use this as a tool a vehicle to generate side income a few thousand dollars here and there you can use it to replace your current job that's a very real thing uh people in our community hundreds of them have done it before you can scale it up to 30 40 50k per month as a single employee business maybe like a partial virtual assistant but that's about it so honestly if you're making 30 40k per month i don't care where you live in the united states you're gonna have a good life and this doesn't require 15 20 employees at that level we have many people who reach that level you can become a lender we have people in our community who chose to take that route and they became the actual lenders with an office and employees um one of our lending partners who help our brokers in our community, they have, I think, 90 people or so. They have a big office, right? And the bulk of work they do uh, is because of uh, our, our brokers, the lending partners. So I just wanted to give you a path of um, like future pace you into what what it looks like if you go all the way in. Again, some people will not understand it, but some of you are gonna get it because if you're just, if you're in the, what I call the survival mode, obviously your immediate focus is to generate some income. I was there, right? I was trying to make more money and I found a vehicle, but that if you expand your vision, you want to have a vehicle that can support that vision. If you start a business that doesn't have those options for total financial independence and passive income, guess what you're going to have to do? A few years from now, you're going to have to jump off of that vehicle and find another one. That's why people usually, while they're making money, they have a side real estate investment portfolio going on, or they try to start an e-commerce business, or they want to invest in, you know, um, uh, stock market or crypto most people do not understand how any of those work they just they're just dying to generate some side income but the worst thing you can do is invest in areas that you don't understand but if you become a business loan broker you understand the rules of money and understand how deals are structured you're investing in yourself you make earnings that you get to 15 20 30k whatever and your earnings are more than your needs right you have access money coming in do you want to go buy real estate? I'm not against buying real estate, but do you really understand how real estate market works? But do you want to get to a point that you totally understand how lending industry works? So you're investing back into 
what you already know. So I'm going to go into the questions that a lot of them have accumulated here. Uh, but does this make sense so far, guys? I just want to give you the full picture of what I mean when I say this is a recession-proof business model. So I wanted you to, for all transparency, see all the all the uh, steps of this and how it can lead up to something much bigger than you have ever imagined. All right. Kevin, good afternoon. Oh, good to hear you from Kevin. I haven't seen you in months. Um, John says, the fixed and flip loans, are they hard money loans? Uh, no, not really. Hard money is... Um, more expensive category of the real estate. So we have in-between solutions. Keith, is it necessary to use social media to find small businesses that need money? It, it is recommended in this day and age, uh, Keith. Otherwise, I mean, you don't, then you're kind of stuck with archaic ways of generating leads such as cold calling and telemarketing. But not everything is archaic. We have plenty of people in our community that generate leads through networking because, you know, Pretty much anyone that you talk to can be a candidate. Either they are looking to start a business or they are in business or they know someone who is in business. So it's not a requirement that um, you use social media, but it is a lot easier to find people on social media. But if you're a networker, yeah, that's not a problem. Jerry, do you find a sector and go after it or do you stay on anybody that needs money? That's the option that you have, Jerry. A lot of our people start as a generalist, meaning that they get themselves familiar with different lending options and simply have a consultation call with uh, their prospective client and ask some questions as to what kind of help they need. And they provide that lead to the respective lender and lending partner. Michael, do you need good credit? Um, Michael, you don't becoming a business loan broker has nothing to do with your credit. Uh, maybe you mean to ask if your customers need to have good credit. Not really. There are options even if they have um, not so good credit. That's that's the beauty of it because the number one reason banks decline a, a business is because the owner doesn't really have that good of a credit, right? So in alternative lending industry, there are many options for that. But obviously those options are... Um, uh, reasonably so, more expensive for someone that's not going to provide a collateral, their credit situation is not the best, and maybe their business is not that stable. So they will potentially still get the funding, but it's not going to be in ideal terms. Well, but those terms sometimes end up saving the business. Sairam, I have been in the lending industry for 19 years. MCA is my area of expertise. How can I be loan broker in the USA? I mean, you, you have it going for you. So if you're familiar with MCA, this is the number one mistake that existing brokers make um, in this industry. They just stick with one product, like merchant cash, especially if you're experienced. You already understand what MCA is. Why not add other funding options to, to your arsenal, such as um, you know uh, SBA, such as term loans, lines of credit, because the customer's who might not be a good fit for MCA, they will be a good fit for other options. Um, so you can certainly do that in US. Michael, how do you close a deal? Well, that's a, such a blanket question, uh, Michael. You have two ways to do that. Either you learn how to close a deal or you work with uh, lending partners who are not direct lenders, but they have the sales force to support mechanism. You send your lead over to them and they take it over. They call your lead, they talk to them, they consult, they place them with the right lender and you get paid a commission. So we have many people who choose to go that route as well. They're not working with the direct lenders, but they're working with lending partners. And uh, uh, you know these people are just responsible from finding businesses who are looking for funding. That's one way to close. If you want to close it yourself, well, the best way to do that is emulate and model someone or a community who does that. Either you have to find yourself a mentor or join a program like ours. We provide the mentorship and the live coaching um, and whatnot. Michael, 55 rejected calls so far today. Um, I don't, did I miss the uh, context, Michael? No leads. <sighs> Steve from Huntington Beach. 
Jeff, is there a way to leverage your group immediately? I have clients now, but learning will take time. If I can step into an organization, build from there. Yeah, that's we have a lot of people, especially coming from the real estate mortgage industry. You can join and immediately start working with our lending partners. Obviously, if you want to learn the business side out, that's not going to happen immediately, right? That's why you leverage the content portal, the live calls that we have, the live coaching calls. We have events and whatnot. So we take advantage. Uh, we, we suggest you take advantage of it while you're walking in. If you're walking in with leads, we have lending partners. You can immediately pass it off to them. Um, interesting. No, I'm at work. Yeah, Michael, if you're at work and you're, that, that's what I mean by like a lot of the existing um, MCA brokerages, you're going to see that a lot because that's not the right way to do if you're dialing people, if you're buying lists of people. Um, there are so many millions of people out there who are looking for a solution. And for whatever reason, uh, most of the MCA companies, they want to focus on a few hundred, a few thousand people who were interested at some point. So I'm always against at buying leads, buying lists and whatnot. Um, US Pro Broker, what is the time and outlay for first six months? W-2, family commitments, et cetera, making the time carve outs during business hours is daunting. What does it typically look like as a side hustle? That's a great, great question. So yeah, all of you have different responsibilities, right? So we can't just assume that you're just going to drop everything and do this. You're going to burn your ships and do that. I'm not the type of coach and mentor that recommends it. Uh, if you have no skin in the game, it's uh, it's easy to tell people, oh, yeah, if you believe in yourself, you can make it happen. Sure, that is true. But if you have kids and a job and other commitments, how do you really make that? That's why it's such a great industry to start out as like a side hustle. Um, and that's why we have two um, networks within our community. One, actual lenders. The other one is what we call the done-for-you partners. So if you only have one to two hours a day, if you can carve out, that much and if you cannot to be perfectly honest you have a time management problem if you cannot carve out one hour like sleep less time and just get one hour right uh, because if you want to change something you, you got you got to sacrifice all right so i know we're all busy but if you if you want something bad enough you find out a solution so you got to decide how much time can i honestly realistically put towards something like this let's Go very conservative. You tell me, Oz, it's only in one hour, man. Now I looked at my calendar. There's no other way. Well, let's be honest. You're not going to be able to talk to the customers on the phone in just one hour. You're not going to be able to follow up with them. That's why we have the done for you options. It doesn't cost you anything up front to work with those partners. But all you do is use our marketing strategies to find interested parties who are looking for funding. They raise their hand and tell you, I'm looking for startup funding. I'm looking for real estate funding. I'm looking, looking for um, working capital right now. And you take that information and send it to our lending partners and they do the follow up. You make money that way, right? And you make you fund a couple of deals a month like that. Usually that is enough to match your current income. Most businesses in the United States are making, you know, $5,000 or so per month. That's about two to three deals per month. An alternative lending industry. You're not looking into selling $9 products. You're not selling, I don't know, like news, newspaper, magazine subscriptions that you need hundreds of customers. We need businesses who need money. And it's relatively easy to find them, right? So that's what it looks like. And it shouldn't take six months, depending on your income, right? So you get you get into the system when you join BLB. I'm going to talk about BLB later on. But since you asked that question, we assign you an onboarding manager. You jump on the phone with one of our internal W2 employees. And this person's job is to create the plan based on where you are in your life. Because we have people who are already experienced in the alternative lending industry joining our, our blueprint. So they don't need the same plan as someone like you. We have people who are single moms with three kids and they have very limited time. We have people who are truck drivers. They're on the road. 18 days of the month, we have construction companies, they're busy and their schedule is kind of sporadic between proposals and actually delivering and fulfilling the work. So each one of them require a customized plan. And that's what we provide in, 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 when you join a business lending blueprint. But I, I want to, whether you do with us or on your own, it is definitely doable. You just need to be realistic about the time that you're putting in and what you're going to get out of it. Once you get rid of 
um, whatever is keeping you occupied, um, like a W2 position, obviously, right? You can reduce it to part-time, then you can totally quit it and focus on this. Then you can go direct to the lenders and do, do the work yourself. Older on, how do you act as a hedge against saturation of this market? Um, every market at some point reaches a level of saturation, right? But with our industry, it is uh, very difficult to reach that because of the banking industry, honestly. If they offered all of the solutions that we're offering right now, there would be no need for alternative lending industry. But look what's happening right now. This is literally happening in front of your eyes. Banks are restricting their funding criteria again because of an impending recession. This recession talk has been going on for like how long now? Like, I don't know, three, four, five years. And the U.S. as a cyclical um economy every 10 plus years there's a recession we're kind of overdue for it uh some say pandemic uh, delayed it some say we're going through it right now so the lending of original lending industry is very sensitive to these things but one thing that does not change is the health of the small businesses demand for small business there's going to be small business economy all the time and there there is I, i'm telling you um 34 million small businesses, 17,000 of them are being founded every single day. And there's only a few thousand business loan brokers. So maybe at some point we will reach a level of saturation. See it happening for a couple of decades at least, okay? You will feel like it is saturated if you're working for an alternative lending. Not all of them, obviously. Some of them are great. But a lot of the companies in alternative lending industry, they make you dial your heart out. I used to do that. You call five, 600 people, then you say, I'm calling, like we're all calling the same people. Yeah, because you're buying the list from the same sources, but there's a whole market outside of that. For that reason, I don't foresee that happening at all. Amara says, makes sense. Great to have you here, buddy. Uh, and Tony, this is so informative. Thanks so much for taking time to do this, sir. Another question, can a business loan broker use the same loans opportunities to get into real estate investing? Also, sure, you can do that. We have many business loan brokers use the lending options on their own business, right? They join because what did I say in the beginning? You cannot afford to not understand how money works, right? So whether you become a business loan broker or you simply want to understand how money moves around and is it every time it moves around, it makes someone wealthy, you need to understand it. Whether you do something with it or not is a different story. Whether you want to generate funding for your next real estate project or you just want to understand how startup funding works, get access to better quality credit cards and stack them prob uh, properly or help your brother and sister start a new business or save their business, that information is not optional anymore. Okay. Everyone is talking about AI taking over jobs. How do you make sure someone doesn't, something doesn't take your job, technology doesn't take your job. You stay on the edge, right? Otherwise you're disposable. Simple as that. George, banks aren't currently lending much money. Yeah, that's the point that I just touched on, George. Banks are always like that. So any chance, any opportunity of a recession or a slowdown, they restrict their funding, um, sometimes down to very low amounts. An alternative lending industry creates a more, more options for us to lend to even larger businesses because we're not interested in their collateral for the most part. We're looking at the business itself. Believe it or not, when New York City was shut down during pandemic, Obviously, the whole city was shut down, which was a horrible decision, but it is what it is. Um, what uh, We had lending partners restructure their offers, and they started offering lending to certain businesses because they knew that some of them would not die and come back. So that's the beauty of dealing with small businesses. You're not trying to make a funding decision on a 500 employee company with board of directors and you know so many different things going on. These are small businesses. You can clearly, if you ever work with small businesses. Like I had a lot of clients in New York City. You walk into a restaurant. I know how I know how they're doing. If I were to underwrite them, I can tell you if that business will be able to pay it back or not. So if you're in a in a small business market, you you know, like you have underwriters who knows uh, underwriters who know that they can fund this business. So we operate almost totally different than how banks do. Coach AI Rod, that's a cool name. Are you a training company or do you provide the platform to send fund deals? Uh, both of them. We, uh, we, we now have a platform. We were a training company only, but recently we do have a platform for you to qualify your leads, uh, leads and submit your deals. 
will ask you what marketing strategies your course teaches a lot, uh, mostly online marketing and also offline marketing, such as networking, um, strategic networking. Um, that's how I started my business because I didn't really understand marketing back in the day when I first started out. All right. Uh, the call me Gerard show. I sign up. I need to schedule enrollment. P perfect. Check your emails. You probably receive a text message or an email from our onboarding manager. Do that. I want to move on to the next topic. Do you want me to cover? Um, how do you become a business loan broker? I kind of touched on it here and there, but I want to be super intentional. Um, and cover how do you become a business loan broker? Is that something you guys want to know? Oh my God, so many questions. Steve, that's not our offer, buddy. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure what you're talking about. We never offer the leads. Again, I do not support that structure. Um, because you're pretty much getting somebody else's garbage. So we never offer leads. So you might be confusing us um, with some other business system. But I want to hear from you uh, if I should talk a little bit about how to become a business loan broker um, right now and also moving into 2024. Wow, we still have so many people. Is, has this been beneficial, guys? Can you give me a yes or no, please? Yes, please. Yes, yes. Awesome. So how do you become a business loan broker? Let's cover that. Um, many industries like real estate, you need to get a license, insurance, you need to get a license, mortgage broker, you need to get a license, securities, uh, things, anything in the stock market, you need to get a license. As of this moment, in the alternative lending industry, you don't really need to get a license to be a business loan broker. So the how do you become a business loan broker is basically you get more informed about the business, but there are a couple of things that would make you a good fit, a better fit than some other people. Because yeah, it is, I guess, kind to say that anyone can be successful with this, but is this really true um, to say it that way? I don't believe so. If you are entrepreneurial and uh, if you want to make a change, I think you should become a business loan broker. But the fear of making change is far greater than the situation that you're in right now. You're probably not a good fit. What I mean by that is if you're not happy with your current situation, but it doesn't really bother you that much that you're not willing to make any transformative changes, I suggest you don't do it because it doesn't hurt bad enough it's the story of the grand grandpa and the grandson and they were you know the story goes that they were sitting on the porch and they have their dog and dogs keep whining and whining and whining and the grandson asks grandpa hey grandpa why, why is the dog crying and the grandpa says well the dog is sitting on a nail and the grandson is surprised and grandson says so well grandpa how come he doesn't move and the grandpa says um it doesn't hurt enough right that's most people right? We complain and bitch about different things. But a lot of times when it comes to taking action, are you really willing to take action? And I think you can answer that question by looking at your past decisions and past behaviors. How many times have you complained about something? And when it comes to changing it, you were too scared to pull the trigger. That doesn't mean something is wrong with you, but it could mean that your problem maybe is not as bad. But most people in the United States, and that's not me saying, statistically speaking, are living paychecks to paychecks. And they don't, they don't even notice that sometimes. Most people do not know the exact amount they need to keep a roof over their heads. Most people do not know the amount of their monthly spend. Most people do not understand how money works. It's a lot easier to build animosity against banks and people with money and rich people and all that then actually become one right so i i guess again I, I i my my goal is i try to be as transparent as possible sure anyone can succeed but will anyone do what it takes to succeed this is the same thing here in the alternative lending industry as a business loan broker we see all, all day long, all the people who tell us that they want to make a change. When we ask them what the plan is, they don't know what the plan is and they're not ready to receive coaching. I spend over $100,000 a year in my own coaching. I hire coaches. Why? 
Well, I was fortunate enough to be mentored at an early age that if you don't know something, learn from someone who's done it. Okay. So that's why like I didn't know about marketing and I was tired of telemarketing and cold calling. I signed up to a coaching platform that taught me how to do online marketing. I attended conferences that showed how to publish books, um, how to speak on stage, how do you generate leads through LinkedIn, Facebook, even like back in the day, Craigslists and things like that, because I was okay with acknowledging that I don't know what I need to know to become successful. I can't expect to sit back and hope that one day things will be better. Hope is not a strategy. Things will be better if you make them better, okay? So many people never had a hard conversation with themselves. So I want to discourage you if you're not willing to push yourself to the next level. If you're telling yourself, I'm too busy to take action, time flies, all right? My kids are five and seven. I remember it like yesterday, the day they were born. They were little babies and I used to change their diapers. Okay, so, and it's been, I can't believe it's been six, seven years. And I'm sure you've been going through the same thing. So unless you make a change in yourself, in your decision-making, in your investment to yourself, I don't think anything will work. Well, if you have a happy job and you see, you can see yourself progressing uh, to a better financial future, I'm not saying that doesn't exist. But I think pandemic was a mean wake-up call to many people who thought their jobs were safe. Nothing could potentially happen. We had the biggest wave of people starting their own businesses because it was a mean, ugly wake-up call that your world can be upside down. Okay? So that's why I only suggest people to take on any entrepreneurial journey if they're coachable, if they're accepting what they don't know and they're hungry for information to build that skill set, that's going to make them more money. You can learn all of this and choose not to become a business loan broker. You can choose to sell your expertise on an hourly basis like a coach. There are many people who pay, who pay thousands of dollars to learn how all of this works. So that's pretty much how you become a business loan broker, right? So you decide on the journey and you've been listening to me for over an hour right now. And if, you, if, if, if this gets you excited, like if you're having butterflies in your stomach that this could be an opportunity and you're a driven person, you're a good fit. And I tell my team all the time, if someone goes through what we have or what this industry has and they're sledge, I don't know, I don't, I don't feel it. That's okay. That just means they're not a good fit, perfectly honest. They could be a good fit for some other thing. Maybe they get more excited about real estate, maybe stock market, maybe crypto. I don't really know. But the people who see it, they understand it. It, it gets them energized. It gets them motivated. If that's you, you got to do something about it. You don't want to wait until that feeling goes away, right? That's my fair warning. We don't have a list of stuff that's going to make you a business loan broker. As Tony Robbins says, 80% is um, on the decision making, the mindset. 15% is the tools. When you make your decision, you'll figure things out. You can figure it out on your own. I have over 200 videos on my YouTube channel. You can watch them all if you want. We have a free masterclass. I have you know, a few hours of content and alternative lending. You can go ahead and check it out. It's on our website. You can sign up to the masterclass. It's 100% free. If, you wanna, if you're ready to invest into business lending, Blueprint have access to our partners and our training and our community. Uh, we just did an event in Dallas, Texas at about 30 people at an amazing time. We called BLB Power Day. We have one coming up in Miami. It's going to be for two days. It's already sold out. So we have a lot of things going on in our community. But before you think about those things, I want you to think about if this is making sense. So give me a yes if this is a, this is this sounds like an exciting opportunity and you're finally clear on how this works. Dane says, I bet I changed more diapers than you. Well, I, I, yeah, I don't know you, Dane. It's possible. All right. So I covered the four questions. Um, the last part 
I don't want to keep you guys long. We've been on for a little over an hour right now. Uh, what questions do you have about um, business lending blueprint? Ms. Vaki says he funded a 125K deal. Israel says, what are all the costs and mob? What is the minimum required to start? Can one get a loan to start? Israel, um, you can get started with as low as a few hundred dollars. The total program is a little over $3,000 to join. I highly suggest that you talk to our team because we want to make sure that it's a good fit and you, you answer your we answer your questions. I'm going to post a link to schedule a call with us. Uh, so anyone who's interested in uh, talking to my team about this, because right now at this point, um, if you've been here for the whole thing, uh, I think you have a pretty good idea how this works. Erica, I just posted the link in the chat, um, so you can use that. Uh, yes, absolutely. Accountability forum for change. Um, I like them. What makes you different from all the other companies? Yeah, um, I don't really talk about others. It's up to you to do your research, but we have the largest network of business loan brokers, both in the United States and Canada. Um, our if you check out our, our content, um, and we, we offer a lot of free stuff too. So I don't talk about other companies. There are a lot of great companies out there. But one thing I can tell you is that, um, for example, like there are free options that you can join. I mean, we have that too for you to get information. Uh, but then you are not becoming really a business loan broker. You're becoming an affiliate. You're sending your leads and you know, they, whatever company you're joining, they're funding it on your behalf. You're getting a portion of that. We do offer that, but we also give you access to the actual lenders. So you can not only do that, we also give you an entire website built under your branding. Uh, we give you the templates, uh, contracts, agreements, the lending partners. We give you the marketing funnels, okay? So you're not using our branded version of the website because we support people to become business loan brokers for their own good. Uh, and own that. So as far as I know, we're the only company that provides an entire system on day one. Uh, we have we don't brag about having a one person team. We have a team of people. We have 12 people here. Uh, we have uh, coaches. So we have live coaching calls. You're not just dropped into a course to go through it. We have recorded content. But on average, we have 10 to 20 live Zoom calls, group calls on a weekly basis. Some of them are from our lending partners. Some of them are from coaches. Again, we have an onboarding person that customizes the whole plan for you. Um, and then, you know, I, I was just I did a news and views call yesterday for our community only to discuss what's going on in the industry, what's happening with the uh, BLB. Uh, we have the software that allows you to submit deals and own it. So many things. Yeah. But I like you to check it out and decide for yourself, because if you ask me, obviously, I'm going to say we're the best um, and that what we do for our brokers uh, helped us get into Inc. 5000, uh, two years in a row, fastest growing companies in the United States. And we share what, you know, what helped us get there. Um, we have a massive marketing initiative and we teach people how that marketing works so you can replicate the same thing pretty much. KH, how is the uh, loan bro broker business going today given the various interest rate hikes? The interest rate hikes are mostly on the banking. Um, on our on our end, it doesn't really affect us. Again, this is a demand-based uh, business and demand is, uh, we, we love recessions. Uh, I'm not wishing it on the US economy or anyone, obviously, but whether we have recessions or not, uh, funding doesn't stop. Well, uh, thank you for this. Can you run us through an example of a deal? Sure, you can help someone get a um, SBA, government-backed uh, funding option, uh, $250,000 or more, and there's express funding options, and you're making 1% to 2% on that one by putting someone through that system. But if someone needs like immediate capital for an emergency or for like a term, term loan or to invest into uh, another vehicle or something like that, you can get the deals funded on deals like that. Let's say the average deal size uh, for small business is about $40,000. So on that deal, you're making three to 5K. And then what you need is pretty straightforward. Um, three months of their business bank statements, 
in one page of application. And we provide you the application, you brand with your business name. We help you uh, set up your business because again, you can do this as a 1099 independent contractor, or you can actually start your own business uh, and st start set up your LLC. And so you take advantage of the tax benefits of having an LLC. Victor says, I'm clear. Kenneth says, yes. Victor, are all business loan products available to BLB members? Um, by all, you mean all in the alternative lending industry? No, there are really just different ones. There are so rare, there are more complicated ones. Like for example, one of our members made $200,000 from one deal by funding a $25 million deal. So that requires working with other members collaborating together. If you have such a large deal, that pay payoff is amazing, obviously, right? We only teach select um, group of lending options that are on demand, that are easy to fund, but you have access to our network of experts. We have about two dozen experts, meaning that these people joined Business Lending Blueprint. And over the years, they became experts and they grew their business. And they're in our community helping our members every single day. Um, so you have access to people like that so you can get cre do creative financing. Accountability Forum. Yeah, we, we can't mention lender names, but lending partners, some of them are super brokers, meaning that they're not lenders, but they have access to lenders. We keep that as an option for busy people who do not want to see a deal through. They just want to focus on generating leads and passing it off. But for those who want to see a deal through uh, and work with the lenders, we have uh, direct lenders as well as the, as well that you can go through. Obviously, if you're collecting your own statements, your own application and submitting it and uh, presenting the offer to the customer, you're making a lot more than when you pass it off. But the second option saves you money. You're still making on average, you know, a thousand to three thousand dollars on deals like that. Uh, smoke it is. Is there a lot of reading? Reading, uh, it's up to you. 99% of our content is in video format, so you can consume it. You can fast forward it, but we have cheat sheets available so you can download one page summary of what you're watching. We also have live calls like the one you're watching right now on Zoom. Um, so you can join and ask your questions similar to how you're doing it right now. Ister, when Google says you have an office in Manhattan, can you talk about it? Yeah, so we used to have an office in Midtown. Oh, we're still keeping the uh, the office by paying we grandfather into a lower rate, but we're not there. Right before the pandemic, I made the decision to go remote. I didn't know anything about pandemic happening. I just noticed that, listen, we're getting more and more talent outside of New York City. Is this really feasible in this day and age to have a large office and pay a lot of money to hold that office. So yeah, technically our address is in New York City, but I'm working from home. This is my home office. I'm in New Jersey and we have team in Texas and Michigan, um, Pennsylvania, and I'm in New Jersey. So yeah, all over the place. I can't read, but I'm very smart without a problem. Yeah, that's good. I mean, we have pe people with needs like that. So that's why we have the live calls. Um, so you, will your program offer lenders for credit card stacking? Yes, we have very strong partners for credit card stacking. And once you do that, what credit card stacking is, is that um, you, so it's mostly what I call startup funding, right? So you have a business, you want to start uh, a business and they need up to $100,000. But the problem is, they don't have any revenue rate yet. It's pre-revenue. They don't have a physical location yet. They don't have the tax returns. How would this person get funding, sort of funding from a bank? Well, they can't. What is the option? Well, if their credit is good, they can apply for a credit card and hopefully Chase or Bank of America gives them a credit card that they can use. But sometimes they need the cash. They can't just swipe the credit card. If they try to do a withdrawal from the ATM while you have the cash advance charges, so you're paying 30, 40%. That's what credit card stacking is. We have expert teams of partners who are looking at somebody's credit report, can stack certain credit cards, uh, work with the client to apply on client's behalf, and also be able to cash that those credit cards um, without having to pay those exuberant charges. Um, so, and as a result of that, you as the broker make money and the lending partner makes money. Uh, our, our community f does about five to six million of that every single month. 
Steve, I suggest that you talk to our team because you're kind of off on our numbers. Um, I just check out uh, because we have a couple of things going on uh, this week. I highly suggest that you talk to our team. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you can, once you join, you're going to have access to the names and actually a lot of the training is recorded with them. So you have a point of contact within our communities, not because, but it is specific to our members. And if, even if you know who they are right now, uh, it's not going to help you because since we do a lot of volume business, our brokers make a lot more money than someone who's just outsider who joins. Right. Um, but yeah, a lot of the training is done with the lenders. That's what I mean by the weekly live call. Some of them are attended by the lenders themselves, the CEO of the company to answer questions. Sounds great. Alex, how many hours total is the course? It doesn't work like that, Alice. Uh, Alex, we have, I'm sorry, uh, we have many training videos, again, live calls. It is customized for what you're trying to accomplish. So it's not something that you're just going to spend X amount of hours and you finish it. Um, that's more like a college student mentality, right? You go through college for four months and you get a diploma. This is a little different. It's, you're learning how to become an entrepreneur. So ours uh, uh, is, a, is a lot more results driven than like time uh, driven because well what if you have all day long well you can go through it in two three days but that's that's different than someone who can put in half an hour a day right jonathan you're in blb congratulations buddy just uh reach out to well you can do two things when you're in the blb portal at the top you see a button coaching you can click on that and um get in contact or you can send an email to our uh, support team support at business landing blueprint.com or you can post in the community uh, Kiss Platinum, will this happen again? Uh, meaning the live. I don't do it often. Honestly, I'm, most of my time is spent with our community. As I said, we had one live in-person meeting for the past four months. So I was busy attending those and preparing those and whatnot. Uh, so as much as I can find time, I just wanted to chime in uh, before the holidays, before Thanksgiving to answer some questions and answer some of the more questions, not so much on the blueprint, but the opportunity itself, because many people... Um, I kind of send back in their decision for the new years. And I just wanted to come on and say, hey, unless you decide to make a change, nothing will change whether you do this or not. Hopefully you um, you understand my point. All right, guys, we're over. We're approaching one hour and 30 minutes. Um, has this been beneficial? I'm going to end it. Uh, we had so many people on this call. I really do appreciate it. Uh, did you find this beneficial as far as understanding how this industry works, how BL probably works and what your next steps could be. Thanks, Omar. I appreciate it. Erica, do we get a mentor with the program? You get multiple mentors, Erica. Yeah, you can join the group sessions or you can you also get like one on one um, coaching. You can have your own one on one coach through Zoom. We have a US based support uh, team. That support team not only answers emails, but if you're running into any challenges, they can jump on a Zoom call and help you fix your problems. Awesome. Great. Uh, great attendance, guys. Great questions. Thanks so much. Yes, so well, a lot of hands-on training. I post the, the uh, link again um, for scheduling a call. If you are interested, if you joined this meeting today, and if you want to talk about getting started with us, just uh, fill out that survey and pick a, a slot that works for you. Usually our calendar is pretty full. So my apologies if you don't have any available spots immediately, uh, but check it out. Looking forward to seeing you guys again. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you like content like this and like the video, please. So I know that this was beneficial, uh, but great meeting a bunch of you. Thank you.